In the 60s, they were the UK's most popular dog, and their stylable curls made them an instantly recognizable breed. But in 2015, when Hampshire locals stumbled across nine mysterious creatures wandering the country lanes, they couldn't identify them at all. Michelle Emmons was one of the first on the scene. I was driving down here, taking my son to school, and there was a small queue of traffic. I got out and I started to walk down, and then I came across the scene of these creatures. And I call them creatures because they didn't look like dogs at the time. They were in an awful state. The dogs couldn't walk. They were covered and caked in mud. In total, nine dogs were found, all in a similar distressed state. The RSPCA were called, and they were taken straight to the vets. Inspector Jan Edwards was responsible for the case. I remember them sitting in the corner of the room. They really did look just like piles of dirty rags. Their coats were just completely matted. It was a shocking, shocking sight to see. The veterinary teams got to work straight away. The dogs were sedated and then began the arduous task of removing their matted, filthy coats. It was difficult to tell even what kind of breed the dog was. And actually, it was only when we really started clipping off the majority of the hair that we really started to unravel and understand what type of breed they were. And underneath all that matted hair were nine poodles. The condition that they were in, I was really concerned that vets were going to find significant health problems with them, and vets were going to be talking about euthanasia. But miraculously, after months of loving care and rehabilitation, all nine of the poodles pulled through. Mavis was one of the dogs most affected by the trauma of the ordeal. I've arranged to meet up with Mavis and her new owner, Sally Firth. I can't wait to see how they're getting on. Oh, wow. Hi, Sally. Hello. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you oh, too. my gosh. Hello. Is this Mavis? Yes, then? yes. <gasps> I didn't even know what colour she was and the pictures that I've seen. Oh, yeah. She's completely different to, to when I first had her. She had no ears, her tail was all gnawed back. Um, the vet thinks they were stuffed into a confined space because all her back legs were, were very bent up and she had to have quite extensive physiotherapy. So, I mean, you took on a pretty big job in Mavis, really, didn't you? I, I did, <laughs> yes. I remember waking up thinking, oh, my God, what have I done? What have I taken on? Because she was she was such a basket case. She was rearing up, barking, and oh, she was a, a real handful. But I think she just needed continuity and TLC, and so I, I just stuck with her. It's been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. They must have gone through hell, these dogs. So, you know, I, I feel very lucky to have her and the way she's come round. She's a lovely, lovely dog, you know, very kind. Gentle dog. She's so graceful as well. Yeah, when you yeah, saw her before, she's sort of just come skipping up and dancing up. She's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Well, I'm so happy she ended up in such a happy home with such a lovely mum. Well oh, done. Thank you. She's gorgeous. You're gorgeous, aren't you, sweetheart? Yes, yeah, special girl. She's just a great companion now. She's lovely.